We do a soft shoe here. Yeah. <laughs> Don't ask me to get so. Keep it up, funny. She's the other dancer. You're on, by the way. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Did you like that for my next yeah. number? <laughs> Yeah. Okay, well, let me stand gonna, back and we'll, we'll, we'll do even we gonna, more. Are we going to uh, yak about, are we talking okay. to about are you, the debate tonight? All right. I don't know. I don't even know if I want to talk to Skip. Well, you don't have to talk to him. Talk to me. Okay. Yeah. Well, so if you, you two want to carry on a conversation, we'll tape it. But okay. I want to say, anyways, thanks for taking a couple minutes with GraniteRock.com, even if you don't include me in your little conversation. <laughs> we love you, Skip, and you're always included in our conversation. That's right. exactly. Whenever you're around, you're welcome. And when I'm not, I'm not. Yeah, when you're not, we'll talk about you. And you do. And it'll well. all be nice. It'll be lovely. It'll yeah. all be nice. Well, speaking of talking, there was a lot of talking going on tonight at St. A's. Certainly. Uh, what did you guys think of the debate? You want to go first? Well, go ahead. I'll, I'll follow that. Ladies first. <laughs> Thank you. I thought all of the candidates handled yes. themselves very well. I thought it was an interesting format, a little mixed up, a little different, but I think you should never have one moderator because his little biases and slants come out. You always have to have at least two or three moderators so it keeps other people in check. He clearly was not fair in his allowing of time. There wasn't any bell system or timing system, it was up to the moderator at his discretion. And it's interesting how some people's answer just suited him just fine, even though they went on and on and on. The next person's answer, which was not so long, he cut them off. Do you Car agree? I, I agree. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that uh, uh, the, uh, the biases that, uh, that Diane's talking about uh, showed through on a, on a lot of the way that the questions were asked as well. Is the questions were mm -hmm. basically, uh, uh, they were trying to uh, corral you into, uh, into a corner uh, with an answer they, that, that it was almost uh, one of the uh, questions put like, uh, have you stopped beating your wife uh, type of questions. <laughs> and, uh, and I think the candidates, some of them who were opposed to those types of questions had to uh, had to uh, be careful on their answer to, to reframe the question, if you will, so it wouldn't pigeonhole them into into a, a, an answer that uh, would have shown negatively uh, on them. Uh, I, I, I would I would like uh, uh, personally to see debates that are that are much more much fairer, and and their and their out and the and the way the questions are asked and the follow-ups. Uh, uh, in the beginning of the debate is the uh, uh, is. Uh, uh, that the moderator had stated that the questions, they, he was going to make sure that they gave a, the answer to the question. Well, there are a number of questions I heard that were asked that the answer never was given, not, uh, not to me. I couldn't, I couldn't defi define the yeah, answer right. because it was, there was a, a yes answer and a no answer to the same question by uh, at least one of the candidates. And, uh, and uh, on several occasions, and I, and I, I, I walked away feeling like, man, uh, what, what was that answer? Uh, because it wasn't clear. And, and I'm a yes or no guy, not yes and no guy. Uh, so uh, I would have called uh, the candidate on that and that made them define their answer uh, either yes or no uh, versus uh, the, uh, the gray area of, uh, of maybe. Well, right. well yeah. certainly you're talking about John King of CNN, but what do you think of the questions from the other folks like Tom Fahey and some of the WMUR staff? Uh, some, of those, some, of those were, some of those were good and some of them I also felt there was some bias. Mm -hmm. I also noticed one other thing is, uh, well I noticed a few things, that, uh, that uh, they had the uh, town halls, if you will, where they had the, uh, the CNN was uh, actually had a, re uh, uh, a reporter, if you will, at, the, uh, at those events, uh, one in uh, uh, in uh, Plymouth. Plymouth, and then the other one was in Rochester, and and uh, then it was at Hancock yeah. as well. Yeah. And Rochester uh, got very few questions asked of them, and most of them were up in Plymouth. Yeah, maybe maybe two questions at most. And uh, did you recognize any of those people asking the questions? Uh, no, I. Oh, yeah, uh, I, I know. Was there? Yes, Sylvia. Yes, Sylvia, I did notice Sylvia, 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 but she uh, was she in Rochester. She, no, no, she, she was up in Plymouth. Plymouth. Yeah, she was in Plymouth. Right. But the Rochester is, uh, is uh, I recognized a lot of the audience being our hometown, and uh, 
uh, and a lot of them are members of the uh, of the PAC and also of the Rochester 912 project as well. And uh, and none of them got it, not a question answered uh, asked. So uh, I was a little yeah. disappointed that uh, that that didn't happen. They they seem to spend more time as, let, allowing the journalists in the audience to ask more. They ask more questions than the than the uh, attendees. And that would make the attendees what props. <laughs> Sort of. Yeah, yeah I, could, I didn't understand that because we, we were told when we went in that um, that whole section, those were people who were going to be asking the questions, and clearly they were not asking the questions. There were one or two of them that came out from there to ask questions. I met with one of the fellows of the union leader and, uh, uh, on the way in, and he was actually asking some of the questions, and he told me, he caught me, he said, Jerry, I'm going to ask some of your questions that you asked at, the, uh, at your uh, gubernatorial, senatorial, and first congressional debates that the Rochester 912 project put on last mm -hmm. year, uh, which I was pleased to actually some of those questions did, kind of, did show up, uh, which were uh, telling questions, I think, which was good. The other thing they did, which of course is typical, they always do, tried to bait one candidate against the other. Well, what do you think he meant when he said that about you? <laughs> well, I heard conversation actually by, uh, by King and uh, one of the other CNN guys, and I don't recall his name, they were talking about, it was, well, actually it was a fellow from WMUR, was the, uh, the uh, uh, and I'm, I'm so bad, I don't recall his name, but he's a reporter for WMUR, and uh, they were having comments back and forth about trying to bait the candidates in afterwards. They were actually and, uh, discussing Oh, yeah, they had a discussion of, oh, yeah, that that's what they were trying to do, and they well, said they almost got him. Let's back this up. You caught a couple of the WMUR. One WMUR and one CNN. It was King and, uh, was and, uh, and uh, the blonde-haired guy. Josh McKelvin? Josh. Uh, was, really? Was talking, yes. And uh, they were having a call right there in front of me of the conversation about trying to bait in the uh, uh, bait in the uh, candidates trying uh, by antagonizing one against the other with the Romney type comments, uh, Romney care and uh, and such. They said they almost they almost pulled it off. So self congratulatory for starting a food fight. For, yeah. From our objective journalists. Well, I, you know, I, I wouldn't go so far as to say objective at all, personally. Well, that was uh, that was, that was and, and I knew that was a snark. Yeah. I knew that was very facetious, and uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, and it was obvious yeah. that uh, that uh, uh, being objective wasn't part of the plan uh, on those debates. Uh, I I am a bit concerned. I know that uh, uh, the Grand St. Patriots <clears throat> Liberty Pack is putting on presidential debates on September 16th on the uh, on a Friday, the 16th, and. Uh, uh, and the Tea Party Express is working with uh, CNN for debates on the 12th down in Florida. And I was a little concerned about the Tea Party Express doing debates uh, with CNN, to be perfectly frank with you, is, uh, is uh, they're not the bastion of liberty, if you will. Uh, and uh, uh, so there will be a little bit of a competition there, if you will, I think, of, of time. Uh, the PAC has already got the candidates to commit that they will do debates with, uh, with uh, uh, the Grand State Patriots Liberty PAC. All but uh, uh, I think Romney is, is one who hasn't committed as of yet, but he was handed the invitation yet again tonight, and they were all made aware of it. So hopefully we'll get them all there on the 16th and, uh, and actually show what a, what a true, fair, and honest, and direct uh, debate is all about, uh, one that won't have any bias other than the Constitution and reclaiming our liberties in this country. Okay. One last question. We've got to go because they want to close down. Uh, I did a little bit of a round table after the debate with some of the attendees here, and the way that they ranked it was Michelle Malk, uh, Mal Michelle Malkin, Michelle Bachman came in first. No, you know, uh, nothing spectacular there expected. Herman Cain came in second, and then Rick Santorum they thought came in third. What order would you have put the folks in? If we if we judge it by the reactions of the audience, mm -hmm. I would think that the next in line would have been Ron Paul. Yeah, Ron Paul. Uh, I, yeah, Ron Paul. I agree with the first two, but to go beyond that, um, ju just judging by what we saw in mm -hmm. the room tonight. Yeah, and, and Ron Paul is, I mean, he's, he's spot on on the Constitution, and you could, you could see that the crowd was responsive to that. That's when he fell back on the constitutionality of a, of a law or of a, or of a decision that's made out of the White House or Congress. And, and the audience was clearly receptive to that. Uh, I also think uh, uh, Tim Plenty did a good job tonight. Uh, I was uh, 
I was uh, happy to see that uh, that he pounded out some fairly good answers uh, in the debate as well. So, uh, uh, hard judging uh, on, uh, on, uh, on 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 this in any other form other than as Diane said is, is how the audience rated it. Uh, I mean, we love Michelle Bachman, and uh, she is the uh, uh, the Tea Party candidate, if you will, between her and Ron Paul, I think, and. Uh, and Herman Cain is stepping up to the plate, uh, and, he, and he gave some great answers as well. But uh, I think Plenty's in the running too, and uh, it's gonna. I think I think those four, to be honest with you, are gonna be the one, be the ones to uh, to to beat in this election. I don't think that uh, you're gonna see uh, uh, Romney. Uh, I, I I just don't see him getting all the traction that uh, that he thinks that he's gonna get. Okay. Well, it's time for us to clear out. I want to say thank you very much thank for spending you. a few minutes with Granite Rock. And if you want some really subjective moderators that won't let anybody off the hook, I can guarantee you that the Grocksters would be more than happy to sit <laughs> and make sure that they this answer a, the question. A, because we are dogged. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. let me tell you, as, uh, as, as I do believe that to be true, Skip. And, uh, uh, and, uh, I ask him if he could play for his, his uh, privilege of, of being the moderator, and he offered me a quarter. That's about 25%, 25 times more than I thought he'd offer. <laughs> And with that, folks, thank you very much for spending a few minutes with Craig and Carl. Thanks, Skip. <laughs>